The Nintendo Entertainment System, it needs no introduction. But have you ever thought about the music in your favorite NES games? Maybe you have a game that you hate but still enjoy the music of. The NES produced some catchy little tunes, some making you sad and some making you pumped up. I'm Duke, and this is my list of the best NES tunes. A couple of things before we put the needle on this record. This list isn't in any kind of order, and it isn't by any means finished. For now, I've only picked a song from each of five NES titles. Now, I'm a fan of rules and restrictions, but I've really only made one caveat for this list. Absolutely no Mega Man music. I know it's good music, you know it's good music, Mega Man knows it's good music. I would rather let some underdogs shine instead of making another list filled with the Blue Bomber's personal playlist. That being said, let's rock. I'm a huge fan of the MechVenture series on the NES and personal computers. They're the games, along with the Pajama Sam series, that got me into point and clicks. If it wasn't for those games, the point and click adventure genre might have been one I'd overlook. The last game released for the NES in the series was the spooky Uninvited, where you must find your kidnapped sister in a haunted house. Honestly, this game scared me as a kid because it was very atmospheric and all the demons that kill the player come out of nowhere and they're terrifying looking and... zombies. They just... ugh. Even at 22, this game is still kind of creepy. The game has its own cheap deaths too, like carrying around a seemingly harmless gem, but it's a great game. The music kind of draws you into this creepy old house until Little Red Bastard starts dancing around. Yes, the Cookie Monster Jam from Uninvited really stands out from the game's creepy soundtrack. It's a happy, quick beat, and it's kind of shocking when you first see the key-holding dancing demon prance around the room. It's also a very short tune, but it's so catchy I was humming it for a little while after hearing it. Sadly, it only gets played a few times. Now keeping with the MechVenture series, let's head over to Gangland and solve a mystery with my favorite 8-bit gumshoe, Ace Harding. The amnesiac detective has been drugged up and left in the worst place on Earth, a public restroom. And upstairs is a guy plugged full of holes and Ace has been framed. It's a classic game of whodunit where you must collect evidence and clear your good name, as soon as you remember it, that is. The theme for Joe's Bar and Deja Vu just screams the crime era sound to me, and it's pretty easy to picture a live band playing this tune in a lounge. The theme's memorable because it's one of the first songs I remember hearing on the NES that actually sounded like a song, and that whole era of music is something I listen to all the time. Maybe Deja Vu's the reason why. The Kunio Kun games didn't make a huge splash over here in the States, but the series is one worth checking out. But this game, whose Japanese name I won't even bother trying to pronounce, was one of my personal favorites. Crash and the Boys Street Challenge is a kind of an urban Olympics game with button mashing controls and awesome music. Most notable, in my mind at least, is the music during the swimming event. Ironically, one of the only events I'm halfway decent at. I love this game. Never got first place though. But this song pumps me up in such a way that makes me think that finally, in the seven years I've known about this game, I could finally have that gold medal within my reach. But it never is. Pull up a turnip and listen up because the overworld theme for Super Mario Bros. 2 is next. This game, in my mind, is one of the best in the series. I know, throwing veggies at things is something only picky eaters and immatures do, but it's a mechanic that I really enjoy. The whole game's music is great, but the overworld theme just stands out as one of the most memorable tunes to me. Bright, fun, catchy, it deserves its mention on this list as one of the best. Tombs and Treasure is a game that I've never heard anyone tell me they've played. I've asked my friends, people online, no one I know has ever popped this archaeological puzzler into their NES. Oh, and look at that, another point-and-click game. I'm starting to see a trend here. This game is great, though confusing as hell. The menu theme, when you name your characters though, for some reason, is hauntingly memorable. 
Using a good range of the producible sounds of the NES, this menu theme should have been used in better places in the game, because it's over so quickly. Once you name your characters, it's off to finding the girl's lost father and killing some demons and never hearing the song again. It's so, so sad. It's a tough one to explain, but this menu tune is probably the best song in the game. Actually, it is, hands down, the best tune in Tombs and Treasure. Remember, this isn't a numbered list, and these five are not the only tunes I'll ever talk about. The NES produced a lot of music, and games, you know, it also did that, but whatever. That's not what we're talking about. What are some of your favorite tunes on the NES? Go ahead and leave a comment and let me know, and maybe we'll agree on a classic tune for the next list. Until then, go ahead and click on the box art of each game to go listen to each tune I've listed here.